Uh, so I'm delighted to talk to you today about uh, health, uh, gender in inequalities in health, and the work that I'll be presenting today is joint with Val Skameka, and I noticed that we have a typo on our very first slide. It is 2018, <laughs> not 2017, so apologies for that. That's what the price you pay when you do a conference two years in a row and you start from the slides last year. Anyway, so apologies for that little typo. Um, actually, I wonder if, do we, oh, I don't have the ability to, okay. Uh, I, uh, great, okay, so this is joint work with Val Skameka and she, Valerie Skameka, and she is a uh, undergraduate here at Stanford, and we're gonna be talking about gender inequalities in health, and there are a lot of ways that we can think about health, um, and no, no one way is perfect. We're going to use mortality slash life expectancy. There are a number of other ways that would be, um, would have other advantages, for example, self-reported health, uh, the prevalence of certain conditions, um, the utilization of medical care, many different methods um, of measures of, of health. And we're really just scratching the surface today. I don't wanna pretend that we're the, the first to look at this, but uh, we thought that especially given recent uh, trends in life expectancy that this would be an interesting thing to zoom in on. So we're gonna look big picture at uh, mortality and life expectancy uh, overall by gender, and then zoom in on a couple of specific conditions and at heterogeneity uh, by age. And I wanna say with the caveat that as, as Sean noted in, the, in his uh, remarks, uh, referring to Aaliyah's great remarks, they were both very informative to me. Here we're sort of not dealing with the issues that Aaliyah raised. We're using administrative data from death certificates, and I have no idea how, they, how well they do with the issues that you raise. So that is something that I'm, I'm gonna try to, try to look into. Um, uh, but just to give a quick overview, uh, so from 1970 to 2010, uh, the average life expectancy in the US increased uh, quite significantly and steadily. Um, and just so you know, the way that life expectancy is measured is it essentially looks, tries to ask an infant born today if every age-specific mortality rate was the same in the future that they are right now, what would the life expectancy for this infant born today be? And that is undoubtedly an imperfect measure because the likelihood that a 27-year-old dies in 27 years is probably different, will be different then, than it is right now. Um, and you know, similarly for a 47-year-old, for a 67-year-old, and so forth. So it, it has, it's a bit like if you were trying to estimate how long it would take you to drive from San Francisco to LA and look out right now how fast are the cars moving. Okay, that's, we're gonna string those together. But of course, things are likely to evolve uh, during the course of the day. Okay, so it, it has been steadily increasing for, uh, for quite some time, and it's pretty remarkable and impressive when you look at that, um, how, how much it has increased. One thing that I think people have uh, noted is that there, though there has been a big uh, narrowing of the gender gap in life expectancy. So in 1970, uh, women, uh, by this measure uh, of life expectancy, were expected to live almost eight years longer. An infant girl would be expected to live almost eight years longer than an infant boy. And by 2010, that had declined to only about five years more. Um, and, the, um, and this is, you know, as, as I noted, it is um, life expectancy is, is one frequently used measure of health. It's by no means the only one, but one thing, one advantage of it is, is it's very clear. It's very, and it's easy, it's easy to be consistent um, over time, but there are certainly many important dimensions of health that it does not, uh, that it does not capture. And you can get a sense, though, of the, how dramatic this increase has been if we look, and I'm gonna focus right now on 1970 to 2010 and then talk a bit about what's happened since 2010. If we look, in 1970, an infant girl uh, was expected to live to the age of almost 75, and today uh, an infant girl is expected to live to the age of, almost, uh, of 81, so that's about a six-year uh, increase. Whereas for men, it was about a nine-year increase over that time period. So you see there the, and you can see the gender gap narrowing there in this figure uh, to the right. Um, you know, what there, and there are some periods that sort of stand out. Like if you look in the late 1990s, life expectancy went up much more for men than for women, and that's a big part of the catch-up uh, for, for men relative to women. 
uh, during this time period. And another thing that you will see in this uh, figure is that since 2010, both for men and for women, life expectancy has not been improving. And this is, I think, uh, something that um, you know, Ann Case and Angus Deaton have noted in their sort of research uh, from a few years ago and many others uh, along uh, the way, but it is a really striking change uh, that life expectancy has not grown. And I want to talk about what, why that is in a second. But just, I, I do want to know, it is many of the gender disparities that we'll be talking about today. I mean, Sean, it was, it was a mix. On the one hand, for, for girls, they were outperforming in reading, and for boys, outperforming in math on average. I mean, on, on this measure, in general, things tend to look a lot better for women than for men. And you know, it's interesting, if you look at any specific age, we don't actually have this in the, in the paper that we wrote, but I just pulled this down. If you look at any specific age, even with this narrowing, men are much more likely to die at pretty much any age. So I just took here 10 different years, 5, 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, all the way up to 95. And what is the annual mortality rate? at each of these ages, and as you can see, uh, so for example, among 25-year-olds, men are about two and a half times more likely, so 157% more likely than, than, than uh, women to die at that age. Uh, for 55-year-old men, it's about 63%. For 75-year-old men, about 43%. So this is a case where uh, the, the, there are big gender disparities, but at every single age from zero to 120, which is the highest age that, the, I mean, uh, I don't know how they estimated at 120, but, uh, uh, but, they, but uh, the, the, there is this, uh, this disparity, which tends to narrow somewhat with age. But there really has been, and this is as of 2014, the most recent year for which uh, we have data, but there really has been um, a stagnation in life expectancy since 2010. It basically hasn't gone up for either uh, men or for women over the last six years. Uh, there are multiple reasons for this. One is the rate at which uh, uh, mortality from cancer and especially from heart disease has been falling has started to slow down. So you can think of if you had on the horizontal axis time and on the vertical axis mortality from heart disease, it was coming down at a pretty steep rate and it's kind of flattened out somewhat. And so that is, uh, that, is, that is going on. And similarly to that, actually, motor vehicle accidents have been coming down a lot, and they have sort of flattened out. But that, that, it, that, that's important also. <clears throat> Simultaneously, deaths from unintentional injuries and suicide have risen quite substantially. Alzheimer's disease has gone up partly because people are not dying of heart disease and cancer, so they're, they're dying somewhat of, uh, uh, of Alzheimer's. Um, and by the way, I know I saw a couple people taking photos of this. Anyone who wants these slides, we're happy to send them on, or maybe they'll be posted. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but suicides and unintentional injuries have big effects on life expectancy because they are more common among younger age groups. So if you get a given increase, a percentage point, some X percentage point increase in the, mortal, in, in the suicide rate or the unintentional injury rate, that's going to tend to have a bigger take life expectancy will tend to take a bigger hit than it would if you had that same increase for heart disease or cancer. Um, and, and among deaths of unintentional injuries, motor vehicle accidents and poisonings, which include drug overdoses, are the most common. And it is interesting, if you just look at unintentional injuries over time, it's only fairly recently that it started to go up, partly because the rise in motor vehicle, the fall in motor vehicle deaths, was being largely offset by an increase in, 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 in drug overdose deaths. I mean, the, the, the rise, for example, for, for opioid-related uh, uh, deaths has been in really um, pretty, pretty scary. But the, so this is, and you, so basically, but that is sort of a, an important um, in understanding why life expectancy has stagnated since 2010. These are you know, really um, important to bear in mind. And you can basically get a sense of this from the following table, uh, which includes uh, age-adjusted mortality rates for the top 10 causes of death in both 2010 and in 2016, along with the male-female ratio for these things. And you'll see for basically every one of these conditions, except Alzheimer's, men are more likely to die from the condition than women. Uh, uh, and, and, but you see from 2010 to 2016, let's say a reduction of about 8% in heart disease, 10% in cancer, but you see the unintentional injury rate up uh, 25%. Uh, percent. 
uh, the suicide rate up about 12%. So those two things, even though they're relatively far down the list from cancer and heart disease, they can have a big effect on life expectancy because of the age at which people are passing away. And I think one thing, um, you know, because this is, there, there are lots of interesting things to potentially zoom in on, um, given uh, the, uh, the patterns, the, I mean, the, the drug overdose deaths um, are certainly interesting, but one that really caught our attention was suicide. Now, it is true, if you look, men are much more likely to commit suicide than women, but that gap has been falling over time. And we just wanted to look, and I want to call your attention to a few different, there are a lot of numbers up here. I love, like, the more numbers in a table, the more I like it, and I know that's not true for everyone. So I put these things up. Sometimes my Ecom 1 students, they'll ask, do we have to know every number in this? No, you know, like, so, uh, but I think there are some really interesting, somewhat, scary, depressing things in this table that I want to point you to. And I started this uh, here. We, Val and I started this in 2000, looking at 2000 to 2015. I actually did a study on suicide 15 years ago when I was an assistant professor about the effects, the relationship between gun availability and suicide. And at that time, I remember the suicide rate in the US had been falling steadily from the mid 80s to the late 90s. And that was you know, a very, um, you know, that was, uh, and it, it coincided with the introduction of Prozac in the mid, late 1980s, and whether that was the driver, who knows, but that, I remember that was kind of the last time that I've really zoomed in personally on the suicide stuff, and things have gone in the exact opposite direction since, just steadily rising, basically since 2000. And you see that is true base for pretty much every gender age group, except for men, I think men uh, 75 and up, but it's interesting to compare from 2000 to 2015 what has happened, the, the changes in suicide rates for males versus females. And I, I haven't seen a lot of people highlight this, and that's just maybe because I don't read enough stuff, which is always true. But if you look at the male suicide rate, it's high, and much higher than for women. But if you look at the changes over the last 15 years, basically for, for males 15 to 24, about an 11% increase. Whereas over that same 15 year period for females 15 to 24, about an 80% increase. And I think that is uh, you know, very striking. Basically at every single age group listed here, the suicide rate increase has been higher for females than it has been for males. Um, and you, know, you can see some especially, uh, I think the, the especially striking change to me is for uh, the youngest age group, but there are some other changes that I think are also noteworthy. Another thing that, I, that struck me uh, from this figure, and I, I don't, I, I'm curious if, if here, others here in the audience know about this, or, but the trajectory of the suicide rate as people age, the differences between men and women, I did not know this, having studied suicide before, but if you look for men, the suicide rate basically rises with age. It's pretty flat from 25 to 34 to 65 to 74, and then it goes up. So it's highest at 85 plus, next highest 75 to 84, and so forth, and pretty flat from 25 to 74. In contrast, for women, for females, this, uh, uh, this peaks, this uh, suicide rate peaks in middle age, 45 to 54, and then falls by about 60% from that age to the 85 and up age, which to me, I've, I, once again, I'm sure someone has noted this before, but I, I, I think that is a really, um, uh, oh gosh, I, I must be out of time. I just, sorry, I'm talking too much. So let me just, but that to me was very striking. Okay, so important takeaways. No one's here is flashing zero, you know, stop, all this. So, uh, uh, sorry. Important takeaways. Average health in the US as measured by life expectancy has not improved during the last several years for either men or women. Uh, I'd say uh, drug poisoning deaths and the increase in the suicide rates are the driving factors. And even though those aren't nearly as common as heart disease and cancer, you get some movement in those, you see the ages at which people are getting hit with these conditions and it can really move the needle on life expectancy. There's been a big narrowing in the life expectancy gap between males and females. Drug deaths have hit men and women about equally hard. So if I'd done the same thing for drug deaths, you would see similar increases for men and women but the suicide rate has very disproportionately affected women. So with that, I will stop.